Hey there, it's Jenny, and I am here today to share with you how I am currently planning in my big teacher happy planner, and I do not use it in the same format, so let me show you how I change it up in case you've never seen this before or seen me do this before because I'm sure you've seen someone do it before. So I like to take a piece of white sticker paper, wouldn't have to be sticker paper, that type of thing, but that's what I use. I trim off a two inch section using my paper trimmer, and then I simply cover up the Monday through Friday on the sidebar. Now you could be thinking, well, that's kind of a lot of work, which obviously it isn't a lot of work, but you can't really find that many planners that work like this. Obviously you can get some sort of like plum paper planner or something like that, but I really like the format and the sizes of boxes in this big teacher happy planner. And so it works really well for me to do this. And honestly, I enjoy the process and that's what really matters. So you can see I've added the days of the week stickers across the top. There's enough columns for Monday through Sunday and Again, if you wanted to have a Sunday start, you could do that too because you're completely making this how you would like it. I'm also adding the dates as well. I am using the Coco Daisy Big Sky Collection. I will link the products or the kits that I'm using down below and I will also link the stamps and the ink and all of that sort of stuff as well just in case you're interested in any of these particular items. So I'm going to use this stamp set from Everyday Explorers to label the different rows. Now I have typically five different categories that I like to use, and I have been changing it up recently, like trying to make some different categories work or whatever, but I, so I'm still sort of making sure that it works for me if that makes sense, like, because I have changed it up and I've also changed up like how I want to use it. So it's not just like a decorative or that type of thing, it's for function. So I like to have a box across the top of things that I don't wanna forget or things that were unique or something like that or notes, that kind of thing. So that's what I use the top box for. And then I use the other four boxes for some combination of like work stuff, or due dates, big things that I need to remember, and then a work to-do list, a home to-do list, and an appointment list. So that is what the four categories are, or the four rows. And so I'm just trying to figure out a way to, or figure out how I want to order them, like which order I want to put those four in, and who I want where, and that kind of thing. So it's just one of those things that I'm still working towards that. I'm using a different color ink for each of the rows just to make them look different to have them not all blend together. Now I am going to decorate a visual triangle which is three clusters of stickers throughout the page that would form a triangle if you were going to draw lines in between them. I just want to create small clusters. I'm not trying to go crazy or anything like that. This planner is mostly functional and so I still like to include decorative elements even though it, I consider this to be a functional planner. I think it's fun, I enjoy it, and it helps me be more productive. And so anything that helps me get more stuff done or you know do the things I need to do, stay on track, is a win in my book. So that's why three little clusters does the job for me. Now this super cute little frame I'm just gonna put up here, I'm not actually layering anything specifically. I mean, obviously it's two stickers, but they kind of were meant to go together, so I'm not really considering that layering. Now over here, I am just gonna put that cute little sort of desert scene, or I don't even really know what you'd call it, over there on Sunday. Now before I add those decorative boxes, I do think about like, okay, well I don't really have anything, like for example, in the work category, okay, I don't have anything due on this day, or I don't have anything noteworthy on this day, so I can put decorative elements in there. And same thing with the other categories as well. So that's how I try to keep track of that and then be able to start the 
process for where I'm going to add the decorative elements. So it's not, you know, every week is not the same, obviously, so that's why they don't go in the same places every week, but I do usually keep the same design for the most part. Now across the bottom, I am doing my appointments or my activities, things I need to do, like go to, or, you know, meetings, those types of things. And so I'm simply using the clean color dot marker and then the mild liners just to make them stand out and pop a little bit and make them differentiate them from the rest of the writing on the page. What I typically like to do is I like to choose three colors that coordinate or match with whatever stickers or other decorations that I'm using. So in this case, I chose three colors and then use them in the dot markers and the mild liners as well. And that way I can really get some variety going and it makes them all look different and they stand out differently. And that's important to me because if they look the same, my brain is going to just gloss right on over them and not keep track of them, and that's not what I want either. Now this is where I like to go back and just add those things up at the top where, like I said, they're just things that are different or stand out about the week and I want to make sure that I don't forget them. So I don't know, I, for me it's things like cleaning day or stuff like that. Now I did write some work things up there which I'm kind of annoyed at myself about but I'm giving myself a little bit of grace because this is one of the things that I'm changing up. I did used to write all of the work due dates along the top as well, but that just got to be too plentiful and there wasn't enough space to differentiate between what I was, uh, those types of things, and then other things like, you know, cleaning or, um, I don't know, somebody visiting, my husband traveling for work, those types of things. So just going to take a minute to retrain my brain as to where to put those work due dates but I'll get there it'll it will definitely all work out now I'm using these Coco Daisy stickers this is the classic cousin kit or one of them is the classic cousin kit and those stickers are sized for a Hobonichi cousin so obviously they're a little bit more narrow than these boxes but I'm, I really don't care about that like it doesn't matter to me because by and large I'm making clusters and so it really doesn't matter if they fold the whole box. I mean, it really doesn't matter to me anyway, but even if it did matter, the clusters themselves become this whole thing. And the fact that they don't cover the whole box is not a big deal at all. So you can see right there, I layered together a few different stickers and it turned out really cute and it's nice. And I know that it's gonna be just a fun little addition and I love how it turned out. All right, so now how I typically plan a week is that's I start where I just showed you. I write all the things down that I already know about and then each day I go back in and I add my to-do lists, changes that might happen in my schedule. I also might add decoration. I might add a book that I read anything like that. So that's what I do on a daily basis is I just go through and update these things. And I don't, I, I don't not include things. Like, so I use this, these to-do lists as kind of a brain dump, if you will, like all of the things I can think of that I might want to get accomplished today. That doesn't mean they all are going to get accomplished and it doesn't mean that I think that it's realistic, but I got it all down on paper and that helps my brain a lot to sort of unload a little bit, if that makes sense. Like I don't feel like I'm worried about forgetting to do something. 
So I add all of those to do's. And then if I finish it, I check it off. If I didn't finish it, but I still want to, I put an arrow to the right. And if I just change my mind or I'm not going to do it or something is different, then I put an X. Now I also, you can see down below, like I had a a game rescheduled. I wrote canceled, but it was really rescheduled. And so I like to make note of that in my planner. So I like to have the plans there and then a canceled sticker because later when I go back, it'll be like, oh yeah, we didn't have that. It was, and then here I wrote that because it rained, that that's the reason why that was canceled. And so I just really like that as, I mean, I'll say kind of a form of memory keeping, but it's really not necessarily, well, actually, you know what? It kind of is. All right, so you can see I'm adding some information about the books that I read this week as well. I really love to do this. I love to have the dates that I started and I love to have the dates that I finished. It just really is satisfying to me to be able to go back and look. And yes, I can use an app and yes, I do use an app, but I also like to have it in my planner with all of the other things that I did that week because I feel like they all work together. They're all part of what I did. So now there is a little open space right here. And so I've decided that I wanted to add a small little decorative element. So I'm going to rub this sort of paint splatter and then this cactus. They're layered together ever so slightly. And I love how it turns out. It's super cute. And I just, I like to have these added extra little elements. I think that they're very adorable. And I, I really think about this practice as sort of a journaling or memory keeping sort of practice like having a finished planner on the shelf at the end of the year that has all of these details and has decoration. It's just going to be fun to look at in the future. And so that is definitely why I do it in addition to the fact that I just enjoy doing it. All right, so we've got the first half of the week and I think it's very satisfying to see a after the pen spread, like to see what it looks like when it's completed, which is why I like to share these with you because I think that a before the pen is very, very beautiful, but it also is very satisfying when it all comes together and a week is completed and you feel good about it. So I like to share that as well. And you know what, it'd be fine even if it wasn't a great week, say you were sick all week or you know some other reason and you just wrote that all in there. I think it's very satisfying to have that record of things. Now I had that game that was canceled and rescheduled to Thursday. So you can see I'm just adding that down there at the bottom. And I just really, like I said already, I, I really like that. I think that like when you come back, oh, it was raining and then it got rescheduled, but you can still kind of see it underneath that canceled sticker. So you know what it was. I just think that it all blends together really well and it makes sense for what I want to do or how I want to keep my planner. Now I do try to keep in mind in those boxes where I am placing the to-do lists just for maximum white space efficiency. So for example, so I put the bottom to-do list on Thursday right up next to the top to-do list because then that leaves a white space at the bottom. However, sometimes I'll do the opposite because I want the white space in a different spot. It just really depends and it just really takes like five seconds of thinking ahead of time where I start writing. Now, of course, I don't do it 100% of the time. There are times where I'm distracted or I just get ahead of myself and that doesn't happen. But when I do, I find it it's really helpful to think about where to put those specific lists within the box if I'm not going to be filling the entire box. So now I'm going to add another little book record and I'm just stamping all of those different book stamps. I'll link those below in case you're interested in if you're a reader. I just, I find that so satisfying, especially to be able to like use one that says loved this book or what a great audio book, you know, something like that, because I think it tells a little bit more about this story. Now I've been talking to you about alphabet stickers since nearly the beginning of time. And I think that they are probably the most overlooked sticker in a planner. I think they are cute. They look really nice. And 
they also serve a functional purpose. So for example, I wrote my son's name and I used alphabet stickers to do so and I think it turned out very adorable. And now it just makes that whole little section look a little bit better, but I was notating the things that I wanted to notate. I also like to keep track of my son's wins and losses in my planner when I think about it. I don't, I don't always remember, so, and I could go back and look them up, but I, I don't always care, to be perfectly honest. But when I remember, I do like to make note of that. I think, again, that would be really fun to look back on in the future, like to be able to have those right there. Obviously, I can find that information on an app, but who knows what life's going to look like in 15 years or something. So it's just important. I really enjoy to keep track of that. Now you can see I used a rub-on and I will use more rub-ons as well. I, the thing I really like about rub-ons in planners is that they are complex. So like a sticker or a stamp in that they have multiple colors, they're really beautifully designed, they look great, but then you also get to be creative. You get to choose your own ink color and you know it really feels like you're accomplishing something when you stamp, or at least it does to me. But rub-ons have no bulk whatsoever. So when you run your finger over the finished product, like you don't even feel it. So it's like a stamp in that way. And it just, they're beautiful. They are really eye-catching. And again, they're creative. You get to actually like take part in the process of adding them to the page. And I like that a lot. Now, Sunday was a fairly laid back sort of day. So all I really have to do is add some book information that I read and then, you know, a little bit of decoration and then that's it. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below and I will do my very best to get back to you. Thank you so much and make it a great day.